Hey guys, it's Gareth Austin, Pew Pew Pew, and welcome to week 5 of season 5 of the GPC. It's uh, It's been a while. Um, last week, this week gone, not last week in terms of battles, uh, we had a grace week because a few coaches had to, had to leave due to personal issues or time constraints, uh, and the replacements had to play their week 4 matches on a bit delayed, so to allow for them to get accustomed and make changes to the teams. We were given a grace week, which was more than okay by me, because I had a busy weekend that weekend anyway. Um, so it just meant I had extra time to prep and plan and and battle Dom. Um, uh, and also, uh, week four, obviously you didn't hear my voice because of the illness I had at the time. So Finally I'm back, I'm feeling better now, and uh, we can hop into the old format of uh, team matchup, team builder, then battle. Um, so let's start off with the first part of this. Um, as you can see, team matchup wise, I'm looking pretty pretty strong. Um, the only real thing that scares me at all is Megalatios. I could somewhat deal with it with Skarmory, with Azumarill, um, even with Umbreon. So it's not a massive threat, but it's still a threat to be considered. Aside from that, Scolipede, got Skarmory, Landorus T, got Skarmory, Slowking, got Megalatios. Cabalion, got Megalatias, Porygon 2, got Megalatias, I can just sub up in its face, Blaziken, got Megalatias, Aromatisse on the defensive spectrum is still somewhat of an issue if Nidoqueen goes down, um, but that's what Nidoqueen's there for, so I've got to preserve it for that. Uh, Magneton can be a nuisance, but I've got plenty of, ways to, plenty of ways, ways to deal with it. So what was I thinking of bringing against this? Well, Megalatias of course, because I mean, I'd be a fool not to. Uh, Azumarill, uh, because even though he's got a few resists to uh, water in Megalatios and Slowking, um, Slowking first of all is slower than Megalatios. Still, even if it if it's weakened, won't appreciate an Aqua Jet. Um, so it's it puts in a lot of work this week. That's that's for damn sure. And plus, the priority will be good against Scolipede because of my main way of taking it down, which will be through Nidoqueen. Uh, if I don't switch in Scalmery, of course, because Nidoqueen's got a Sugar Berry. Which means I can stop the if he wants to sort of dance in my face or just earthquake. I can take the hit or live an extra turn because he's swords dancing, get damage off and finish off with an Equa Jet, which was the whole way of dealing with Scolipede if Skarmory was down in my head. Um, Skarmory, of course, I'm bringing because it's a huge stop to most of his physical threats. Uh, Blaze can be the only one, but I'd make a Latias for that anyway. Um, I then decided to bring uh, Umbreon because it's a good stop to both his psychic special attackers and plus if uh, he does have Paragon having a status inflicted that's also a cleric is very useful and finally for the last pick I wasn't too sure what I wanted to bring uh, I was considering bringing Rotomo but I need more physical presence I was going to go Durant but I felt that the stab close combat to break a Paragon 2 would have been more useful so I ended up bringing up Primate, Primate but it made me be there for momentum switch up or breaking down the Paragon 2 um, so, without further ado, let's just hop into the team builder and I can show you what sets I decided to bring. So as you can see, this is the team that I brought. It's um, a bit more reliable than uh, the strat I decided to bring last week. That was sort of a one-off uh, meme style. It almost worked. Uh, if I set up another curse and I was running Stone Edge instead of Head Smash, because I would have then not taken the recoil. Uh, if I was at plus three, plus three, I would have uh, not taken the recoil, taken an EQ, and just swept his team pretty much, so that would have been fun. Um, but that's beside the point. Um, we have um, this particular spread here is uh, enough special defense to take a Dragon Pulse and an HP Fire from Max Special Attack Megalatios. Megalatios, sorry. Uh, the rest in defense, um, just there because I needed it to be more physically defensive. To deal with things like Blaziken if it was locked in through an HJK, um, his Landorus if he was running Superpower, and um, things like that. His physical threats that I would be able to wall just wall more effectively, essentially. Um, so that was sort of the idea with this. Um, as for the set, uh, I initially had Defog and uh, Whirlwind instead of Spikes and Tailwind. Um, but his team, his only possible remover is his Latios. And with a Scolipede, uh, getting hazards up can be very useful, especially if it's Sash, and plus then it can die to an Earth Power from Nidoqueen. Um, 
So I decided not to bring Hazard Removal this week for that simple reason that he may be able to stack against me, but the Hazards that I will be setting up will be more influential in the long run, because if you look at my team, literally nothing is weak to rocks. Uh, there are two things that aren't grounded, Desert and Queen to absorb potential toxic spikes from Scholarpede, so I'm not too worried about Hazards this game. Um, that was sort of the idea with this set, Roost for Recovery, of course, and Brave Bird, just for stab, and it does something like 92% minimum to a Scholarpede, so if I do have the spikes up, it's a no-co. Um, then we have Azumarill, uh, Belly Drum set once again, uh, enough speed to creep uh, Porygon 2 with 20 in speed, um, I think it was 20, it might have been 24, I can't remember exactly, but with a bit of speed, uh, because Dom's smart enough to know that I can creep things, especially Azumarill for the Porygon 2, um, so I did factor that in. Uh, rest in attack and HP of course, max attack, adamant. Um, with Aquajet Play Rough and Superpower, Aquajet and Play Rough are going to be the main two moves I'm using. Uh, Aquajet kills basically everything that isn't Porygon to Slowking or Megalatios. Megalatios is still alive, it, unless it has Thunderbolt or something to hit me super effectively, I can basically take a hit. Um, if uh, Slowking is slower anyway, even if he's nigh on max speed, uh, he's not going to... I mean, he's not going to do that, even if he did, uh, that would be really impressive. But play rough straight up kills it, and uh, superpower is therefore with the uh, Porygon 2 as stated prior because it can take a play. Uh, I think it can take a play rough if it's max defense bold, which is absolutely ridiculous. Then we have uh, um, Latias. Oh, yeah, I forgot to nickname the last four. I don't know what happened there, but uh, as you can see, I've got Tarkus and Amarillo as normal. Uh, the others not so much, so sorry about that. Uh, this is of course, uh, I forget what I've named, oh, Buff Spyro. Uh, Calamity is my regular Latias name. Uh, this speed is to creep Landorus, rest in defense and HP, subcar mindset once again. Uh, the only thing that can stop this is Aromatis, uh, but I do have ways to deal with that, mainly Nido Queen, uh, and I'm not too worried about it, so if, if that goes down, basically a sweep. Um, then we have Nido Queen, as I said. Uh, Mercury, of course, that to deal with uh, basically everything on his team. Uh, this coverage just destroys everything that isn't Slowking, uh, which if he's in Solvest is a switch in. But if he's more of an offensive set, maybe Specs or maybe uh, just a Calm Mind defensive set. Uh, Sodge Wave and Earth Power do have a chance to do it care if I remember right with Life Orb. But I do need the Sugar Berry to take the EQ uh, from. Uh, uh, I can't think of the name now, Scolopede and from Landorus. I can take, from XHP, I can take them, one of the two from both and then just kill it off with uh, Ice Beam or, or get damage off with Earth Power respectively. Uh, 24 on speed just to avoid being crept. I don't think that was to catch up on anything unless... No, it's a lot faster than uh, uh, than Porygon 2. Uh, then we have Umbreon, more defensive set, mainly because his special threats, uh, unless Latias is set up, I can somewhat deal with. Uh, on, you know, like, uh, in terms of damage I can take, uh, with this particular spread, I think I take a superpower, uh, no, I can take a mega horn from full, from a scholarpede, uh, and not die from it, and I do a lot of damage off with foul play, and if he saws dance up in my face, predicting me to switch, because I can't normally take it, I kill off with the foul play anyway. Um, that was the main idea behind it, rest in special defense, uh, nigh on max HP, 16 speed to avoid being crept, sort of the idea there. Uh, if you just have a Calm Mind Latios, uh, my only plan of action is to Toxic it, because I can't take two hits. Uh, I can take two with the leftovers unless he's running, like, um, uh, I don't know if he gets Focus Blast, but something of the sorts, uh, Signal Beam or something like that, uh, to hit this super effectively. And finally, as I said, Scarf Primate, because, let's be honest, it's, it's a Primate, but I need a Scarfer, and I said I wanted to stab close combat, so it's there, mainly for that. Uh, U-turn was just for momentum switch up. Stone Edge uh, was for Scolopede. I initially had Gunk Shot there for the Aromatis, uh, but uh, getting rid of the Scolopede was a lot more important, and I have Ice Punch, of course, for Landorus. Um, so, as you can tell, surprisingly more defensive uh, from me. Normally, I only have one Mon that's mainly tailored to defense, one that's semi like the Latias, and the rest all sort of speedy offensive. Whereas this time it's more tailored towards bulk, somewhat towards speed, and just to uh, basically just beating his team uh, slowly but surely. Um, 
I do have a very good matchup this week, and I'm confident in my chances at winning, so without further ado, let's just hop into the match. Hello, and welcome to the battle. Uh, this is my second time recording this because Camtasia for some reason decided that the recorder was going to break for no reason and uh, stopped recording everything past 44 seconds. Um, so here we are, here's the team matchup. As you can see, he brought everything pretty much that I expected except for he doesn't have Polygon 2, he has Magneton instead, which is only a little bit of a nuisance, um, but nothing too special. Uh, a bit of con context for this. Uh, Dom, I believe, was playing on his phone, or at the very least he was pressed with time, and I had some weird connection issues. I disconnected a few times and had to join back in. Uh, probably the showdown server's being a bit weird. Uh, and that resulted in one particular play on his behalf, which wasn't under his control, or so he says. Uh, I'll go over that when it happens. Um, but yeah, overall, looking pretty uh, good of a matchup in my favour. Uh, Nidder Queen will be my lead of choice. Uh, I do have... basically want rocks up ASAP. There's only potential defogger is Latios, and looking at his team structure, it's probably offensive. Um, not going to want to run defog on it, as a card mindset is pretty threatening to my team. Not too bad, but still pretty threatening. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of... Uh, the only lead, really, that I will not stay in and set up rocks on is his Latios. Um, even, I would even stay in on the Slow King. Uh, so you'll see, only leads with, I lead off with the Queen, as I said as he does end up leading with his Latios. Uh, now I don't want to risk a psychic move even though him going for uh, a dragon move or even a potential setup move is his better play. I just don't want to risk it. I don't want to lose Nidoqueen Queen for turn 1. It's my best way to deal with the Romatisse. Uh, so as you see, Mega Revolves and sets my car mine turn 1. Uh, now that is rather confusing. Setting up turn 1 isn't always the best. I'm not Riz. Um, and uh, he... But it's also kind of scary because I don't have much for this. Uh, but me not being Riz, I do know how to deal with a setup mon, um, a setup dragon at, at that as well. Uh, so I just switch, I toxicate and switch back out in Skarmory. Skarmory is basically a sack. Uh, this was mainly hits how to stack and deal with the Scolipede, but I do have other ways to deal with the Scolipede, and uh, he ends up setting in Carmine, which means I can get up a layer of spikes, at least. If he can't sm Carmine's again, I get another layer. He goes for the Thunderbolt, uh, burning my Wakanberry, he gets a crit, which I believe uh, didn't end up mattering in the sense that I went down to my study instead of taking like 92%, uh, but overall it doesn't really matter. I get the spikes up, which is good, it means that a potential sash is broken on, um, on Scolopede, and it means that just a lot of his switchings are worn down, uh, and if I get my rocks up that means everything takes 24% on switching, more or less, dependent on the mons. So he starts, uh, uh, at this point I've lost my Skarmory, this is pretty much dead, U-turn kills it from this range. That's honestly my best play, even if he goes out into his Landorus or his Aromatis to eat it, they take hazard damage or I get a free switch into something. As I do just that, I U-turn it out on this and go straight out into my Nido Queen, freest rocks of the century, and they're there to stay. His Latios definitely does not have um, defog, he's calm mind. Uh, dragon and, le and Thunder Stab. I'm expecting him to have Roost as well, or at least some form of recovery, because it could be recover as well. Uh, as he just goes out into a Scolipede on the rocks. Fair play to him uh, for doing that. Here I'm fearing more of his setup set, so I just go for the Earth Power as he ends up setting up his spikes. Understandable, because my main Defogger uh, is now gone, even though I don't have Defog this week, as I said prior as he sets up a layer of spikes, and ends up setting the toxic spikes, which uh, is a bit questionable. Uh, I would have set up a second layer in, of regular spikes in his place, because I do have Nidder Queen to burn it. But maybe he forgot about that mechanic. Uh, I end up killing it off with a nice beam, because it was my safest move to go for. And here is a, somewhat of a big play. Um, my obvious play is to go out into Umbreon, predicting a dragon move. Uh, I don't want it to calm mind up again, or get uh, damage off on the Umbreon to the point where it'll die. So I just stay in and go for the Ice Beam, as he just go for the Dragon Pulse. So either doesn't have the psychic move or decided not to go for it, and I do kill it off with a nice beam. Oh, majestic! So the queen, 2 now already. In the space of two turns, got two kills. <coughs> Fantastic. He sends out his Magneton. Now the flash gun play is terribly obvious, uh, but I don't have much to switch into it aside from my Latias, which can eat up hits for days. Even before my Grovolving, only takes 30%. And now I have the freest of Carmine setups, but I know he knows this. 
So I decided to double out straight into Nindo Queen, predicting the Aromatis to come in. As it takes a lot of damage on switching, that's why the hazards are there to wear this thing down, to wear any switching down. And Nindo Queen is in once again, looking at Spick and Span, ready to get another kill. Um, here, I, I Ice Beam, predicting him to go out into his Landorus. Because, in my mind, my safest play is to go for the Earth Power, because it hits this decently well, it uh, hits the Magneton decently well, and it hits the Slow King decently well. The only thing it doesn't hit well is a Landorus. His two obvious switchings would be the Magneton or the Landorus on the Sludge Wave. Um, so here, I go for the Ice Beam, which gets through it by the Protect. Now, now, my safest play is to go for the Earth Power, predicting him to switch into something to take the Ice Beam. So I decided to go for the Sludge Wave, predicting this to stay in, and that does happen. The only two switchings he would have really done is stayed in with this or gone out and Slow King. So Sludge Wave was a better play, and it ends up paying off. This is the turn where the lag or whatever happened. He Don says that he didn't make this play. There's no way me, for me to confirm that, but I do trust what he says. I stay in predicting him to U-turn uh, be, uh, because either he earthquakes this and kills it off, which means that he's speedy, maybe offensive, maybe scarfed. In which case, Latios is a relatively free switch. <coughs> sorry, or Earth powers, no oh, earthquake. Sorry, and I uh, and or a U-turn. Sorry, and I get a free Earth power off on something. Uh, so I Earth power. As he ends up going out into his Bangstone, this is the play that he says that he doesn't do. Maybe he fat fingered it, maybe showdown lagged or something, I don't know. But he didn't press anything according to him, and he ends up going out into his Bangstone, and that just drops to an Earth Power, which is unfortunate indeed. Uh, now his switch of choice is back into his Landorus, and I don't want to take an EQ, I want to keep this alive just in case, because it does do somewhat a uh, decent amount of damage to his Slow King. So I decided to suck off my my Umbreon, mainly because I want to free switch into my Azumarill, which can clean up at this point. Uh, as he goes for the Gravity, which is an interesting move, uh, it means that he couldn't deal with Levitate, uh, that won't affect his choice of moves at all. Him staying in and doing that was quite a surprising play, especially when I've got the Ice Beam, but... Uh, he Earthquakes as I Toxic, mainly just putting the Toxic on because Foul Play wouldn't have done much anyway, and I want to make sure this thing gets worn down slowly. Even though, realistically, it doesn't matter. As the earthquakes to kill me off, and now Azumarill just comes in, belly drums up, and cleans up. Simple as, unless I miss a player rough. But, spoilers, I don't. Um, so yeah, I don't with the setup Dragon first turn better than Riz did. Moral of the story. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's a solid 4-0 in my favour. Your Queen going 4-0, uh, Azumarill going 2-0. Uh, I'm now sitting near the top with a 4-1 record, plus 9 differential I want to say. I honestly can't remember. Uh, it's a differential over my first 3 games because I lost 4-0 then won 4-0. Um, simple as. Uh, next, um, there's not much, really much more to say. Uh, Dom did have a rough matchup to be fair, and uh, it was a pretty easy game in retrospect. I just had to not choke it away, which I didn't do thankfully. Uh, in pure Gareth fashion, I, it wouldn't surprise me if I did, but I, I stayed true to my team and that ended up working for me. Um, yeah, not much more to say on this game, um, it's just unfortunate for Dom really, uh, it wasn't an easy one for him to even contest, let alone win. So next week uh, I am facing off against Pete Ryquin, uh, coach from the New Queens Park Rangers, a newcomer, he is replacing Bub. Uh, and if you know him from anywhere else, you will know this is pretty much a free win for me. Even though, to be fair, he did turn up against, I believe it was Jarrett. I can't remember who he faced. But he did end up turning up, hacks him to shit. And you know what it's like with me and hacks, it's not going to be good if that happens to me. Um, so, we'll see how that goes. Uh, all that's left for me to say is thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.